For brothers and sisters, this is Mary Hernandez with part two video. It was must have been some computer glitch that knocked me out of the <laughs> reading about false prophets. And also to open your heavenly eyes, how it is the creature and the creator. And it's just you finding the enigma and the analogy and being able to tell the difference and doing a little bit more studying so you could get to the truth and what it really says. And we go from there. <clears throat> Again, I was in Acts 13 before it rudely interrupted me. Was in Acts 13, 6. When they had gone through the aisles onto Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jewish whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergas Paulus. You know, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Sal desired to hear the word of God. So he called them over. You know, you know, he's asking, you're asked, you know, you, you see things that are wandering on. It almost makes you question everything that you had ever believed in. And you see in this people that are doing signs and wonders and you're all like, man, maybe they are God. You know, they were using sorceries. They were witch and witchcraft to do that. And we all bought into it. You know, but Elemis was the sorceress who in the name is interpretation without stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. You get it? That is her mission is to get you to believe this instead of that. So that's what Jesus meant when he said, he goes, if you're still blind, you're still sinning when the Pharisees asked him, am I blind? He said, are you still sinning? Because if you're still sinning, then yeah, you're still blind. If you haven't walked into your inheritance for children of God, well then, hey, you're still blind. You still haven't gotten baptized in the water covenant with the Ten Commandments that tells you no sin. You must not have no other idols. No idols. I sit here and I drop in the middle of the floor and I pray always on my knees, brothers and sisters. I don't make anything idle around me and look at it and pray. I don't make a man idle and make them pray. I show respect for people, but I don't idolize them, you know? Now, Acts 13, then Sal, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. And a one that is stability is the mischief of the childless. And it says it like that. It says, um, Acts 13 10 and he said oh full of all stability and all mischief though you're the child of the devil though an enemy of all righteousness will though not cease to pervert the right ways to the Lord and now behold the hands of the Lord is upon thee and those should be blind and see the sun for a season and immediately they fell him in the midst of darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. The deputy, he saw that what he had done and believed and astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. When Paul and his company loosed Patmos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, as Pamphylia, and John departed and returned to Jerusalem. When they departed from Perga and they came to Antioch and Poseidon and they went into the synagogue of the Sabbath day, they sat down. After reading the law, the prophets and the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men, brethren, you have the word of exhortation for the people that say, Then Paul stood up, beckoning with him in the hand of the man of Israel, that you fear God, give audience. It says, The God of his people of Israel, Charles, our fathers, exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. As a high arm brought them out out of it, and about the time in forty years suffered in this manner in the wilderness, when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Shannon, and he divided their land by lot after he gave unto the judges a space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. Afterwards they desired a king of God unto themselves, sons of Sis with the name of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. When he had removed him, he raised him up onto them. Ready? Are you ready for this? It's the David 
to be their king, to whom also gave testimony and said they have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill my will. And when the man seed God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, and then they put apostrophe Jesus. So you get the creature and then you get, you know, you get God and you get the creature, the creator, and then the creature, and then they added Jesus. And that is in Acts 13. 23. Now Acts 13, 24, when John had first preached before his coming, baptismal of repentance is some. Okay, and kind of when it shows you a daily Bible verse, and then it does that little bell, right? It does that, I don't know, but it does. Anyway, sorry about that, Acts 13, 24. When John had heard to preach before the coming of baptismal, baptismal to all of the people of Israel, John fulfill his course in whom they think that I am, that I am not he. But behold, they cometh one after me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to lose. Men and brethren and children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever is among you feareth God, to you is the word of the salvation sent. For when they dwell at Jerusalem, the rulers, because they knew him not, nor their voices, the prophets, which were read every Sabbath, day they fulfill them and condemning him and though they have found no cause of death in him yet they desired that Pilate that he would that he shall be slain when they had fulfilled all that was written in him they took him down from the tree laid him on the splinter but God raised him from the dead and seen many days in which they come in Galilee and Jerusalem who were his witnesses unto people <clears throat> when they declare unto you glad Titans that he had promised he'd made unto the fathers. And if you remember um, how I just did one, I believe uh, only how it talks about um, the saints. Um, what do the Roman Catholics do and what were the meaning of the three gifts from the three wise men? It's almost like embalming their um, deities. They, they also have a preparation, and that's how they become saints for the ungodly. You know, you get it? You're either going to go to the land of the dead. And there's an afterlife, so you're either going to go to the land of the dead, serve the dead, and then, um, or either you're going to be the children of the Most High God. That is, he's the God of the living. She's the God of the living, and we were with the God of the dead. And that is also in here. God, and now it says, Acts 13:23. God had fulfilled the same unto us, the children that he had raised up Jesus again, and also written in the second Psalm, Though are the son of this day, I have begotten thee. I am concerning that he raised him up from the dead, and now no more to return to the corruption that he said to the wise, I will give you sure mercy of David. Wherefore he said another Psalms, Though should not suffer in thine holy, and no one seek corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation. Are you listening? This is Acts 13.36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep that was laid onto his fathers and saw corruption. So that's where he went. After he fell asleep. Asleep, that means you're sleeping to sin, so you're dead. Because you died to sin. So he said he was laid unto his fathers that saw corruption. But he who God raised again saw no corruption. It tells you right in there. So you're going to be either among the ones that are corrupted. You're going to you cross over. You go to sleep. Or you're going to come to the one and there is no corruption. And it tells you just in there. And just so you know, Acts 13, 36, and 37, and 38. You get it? Now, it says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you is forgiveness of sin. By him all that believe are justified by all things from which you have not justified the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, at least that you come upon you which is spoken of the prophets. Behold, you despisers and wondered and perished, for I work a work in your days, and work which you shall no wise believe through a man is declared unto you. And yet, you believe. What are you going to believe? 
You're going to believe the maker or you're going to believe that the Bible, there's more to it. So the promises, the visions, everything that Mother God has put in you. Are you going to believe that or are you going to believe the naysayers? They don't believe. They're already believing that those are king. That is God right there. You already sold down and he tells you all of them. They were doing signs and wonders and everybody was like flocking. And what did it say? That sheep was going right to the slaughterhouse. Right where we want you, we have you. And it says it. Acts 13, 42, when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles besought these words that they may preach unto them and the next Sabbath. But when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious pastorists followed Paul and Barnabas, who were speaking them, persuaded to continuing grace of God. Right? And if you remember, who was Paul and Barnabas? Do you remember? We went over this. Let me see. Uh -uh. Let's go to it. Um, if you remember when I um, actually did one not too long ago that talked about um, Mercury and and um, Jupiter, which is in Acts 13, and it is in there. Um, let me see. I apologize. Um, 14. Um, Acts 13, 50 and 52. So it's a little bit further down, but let me go ahead and continue reading it. It says um, Acts 13, 43, and I'm going to go a little bit further down. When the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious pulsarized followed Paul and Barnabas, who were speaking to them. They persuaded them to continue the grace of God. The next Sabbath day came almost, and the whole city together, they hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and they spake against these things which were spoken to Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. So they were mad at them. You know, when we were reading that they were being attacked, we thought, man, they're, they're, they're being attacked because they're, um, they're, they're preaching the word Jesus. I thought that. I was sold out to that. I said, how dare they? No. They were being stoned because they were blaspheming, saying that they, the man was God, and that was blaspheming the Holy Spirit, like almost you weren't acknowledging the Creator. And you were preaching false doctrine to the people, and they were straying them away straight to the slaughterhouse. You were buying right into the dogma, uh, the cupcake dogma of the doctrine that Jesus is Lord. You know, then Paul and Barnabas walks bold. And this is Acts 13, 46. Paul and Barnabas walk bold. And he said, necessary that the word of God should be first. It's been spoken to you, seeing that you are the judge yourself, unworthy of everlasting life to turn to the Gentiles. So he had commanded us saying, have you sent thee to the light of the Gentiles? Those should be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Um, when the Gentiles heard, they were glad and they glorified the word of the Lord as they had obtained eternal life, believed that the word of the Lord published throughout the region. And they stirred up the devout, honorable women and shipmen in the city prosecution against Paul and Barnabas. They expelled the coast out of the coast and they shook up the dust off against them that were into Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost, Right. So I was all like, I had done a study in it and who Paul and Barnabas were. And I had the revelation in Acts 13, 50 and 52, Acts 14, 1 through 28. As that had, Oconium was the garden spot situated in the midst of archers and forms, but it was also the surrounding deserts. Oconium was chosen a place for missionaries operations, the apostles first visit and the approach which lay um, in the West in the ADs in the 44, which he had, um, to which he had been driven, you know, in the prosecution of the loss, Acts 30, 50, 51. Latin name in ancient was the city of um, Canonian in Turkey, Iconium, made also in Acts 14, referred to Iconium as Roman Catholics, for they were centering in Lysonia, in Lysonia, in the until this present day in Turkey, so the puppet ruler, right? 
it's also known in, it's called Aza in 39.1. Jupiter Bible meaning, Lois Hermans, the principal of the deity of the ancient Greeks, Romans. They worshiped them in various Iphias, Barnabas was identified by Lysonians in Acts 14.12, the father of the Helpeth. <laughs> There's no such thing as Helpeth. But in the religions, they were helping them, you know, the Roman Catholics. Mercury is the son of the stars of Assyrians, Babylons, that he is the god, the god that, uh, for financial gain, um, commerce, eloquence, messages, communicators, including the divination of travelers, boundaries, luck, trickery, and thieves, but also serve the guide of souls to the, what? The underworld. <laughs> That's who they serve. <laughs> and there was then the strain you ride into the slaughterhouse, brothers and sisters. We were like easy, easy prey to them because we didn't know. And it seems so much better that the dogma that they were feeding us seemed much better than what we wanted to believe, you know? And that was the sad thing because it was true. And it's all in there, you know? And there's so much more to it as you do, you read it. Tells you who Barnabas owned. They were Jupiters that were on God the gods for the underworld, you know? But they were doing signs and wonders. No, they were doing sorceries. And it also tells you that in there. So people were seeing the signs and wonders. Well, it was witchcraft. It was sorceries. And that's why the people were telling them, hey, you're straying away this people. Get out of here. And they would get chased out. So when we were reading that, we were reading as a concept because they were preaching Jesus. Man, they were being pushed out. How dare you? I was bought into it. And so I started studying. I was like, wow. They were chasing them because they were trying to save you and me. The same way as if when I was out there in the darkness. And she just kept saying, keep on, keep reading, keep digging. And then preach liberty and preach deliverance, not just to my children, but to this whole world. So we come out of that false doctrine that Jesus is Lord. And we were making men kings. They cannot prophesy. They don't see dreams, dreams, nothing. And it said, you are lying to my daughters. You're keeping them down there playing hardest to blam that he is God. He is Lord. And it's the king of the kings, the Lord of the Lord. No, all that was false doctrine. Oh, yeah, let me go back in here. And it's in there, you know. In Acts 13, 36, 37, for David has served his own generation. And you read it, you know, there's so much. And he tells you where he went. He went with like the rest of his fathers that were corrupted. And they were able to see um, people that were corrupted. But when you're not living like that, you see people that are not corrupted. But in this journey, she has sent me on a mission. Just like the evildoers were sent on a mission to stray you away. So you believe that Jesus is Lord. Men are the ones that are God. You know? And it's, it's false doctrine, brothers and sisters. You know? But it says, people ask, what was Paul Barnabas known for in the Bible? Barnabas was a Hellenist, a Jewish who joined Jerusalem church soon after Christ's crucifixion, sold the property and gave him. So they, they did that. They were selling, they followed them, you know, they were sold out, you know, the community in Acts 4, 36 to 37, he was a cryptos. They were founded in Acts 11, 19, 20. Look up the words crypto and it'll tell you what it is. It is nothing but evil and darkness. What they were serving, where they come from, the underworld. Why Bernabas was called Jupiter and Lastra inhabitants um, supposed Jupiter was imprinciated. Um, Bernabas and at Atheus were prefers to be image of Diane, the fallen from Jupiter or heaven, Acts 14, 12 and 13. They called Bernabas Jupiter and Paul was called Mercurius because they were the chief speakers. <laughs> Follow with the Acts 13, 50 to 52 over the chapters of Acts 14, 1 through 28. Barnabas born Joseph or Hoses was according to the tradition of the early Christian was prominent Christian disciples. Jerusalem according to Acts 436. Barnabas was a crypto Jewish Wikipedia. Barnabas was a Hellenist Jews that joined Jerusalem church in what I just read. Mercurius is Hermes is the speaker of the Greeks Acts 1412. It says, heathens, God presented, constant attendant of Jupiter, the gods of eloquence, inhabitants. Lester took Paul for God because he was a chief speaker. 
you know. Um, now, the smallest planet is the solar system, the planets, the sun, the translator Hermes, you know, and it tells you on there, the demon, I mean, where they really come from, that's where you get the elements, where the scientists or saints, goddess, whatever they want to call them, that um, they, they don't want to say that God did, so you get them that say, well, we discovered Saturn, so we're going to call that, that's Jupiter, that's, that's Paul. Paul, you know, now that's Jupiter. Mercury's, you know what? You're serving the darkness. You're serving the underworld. And they want to say that it was them that discovered it. They're the ones, the scientists that did. Not knowing that it was the creator that made it all from the very beginning of Genesis 1. You know? Um, and the father that helpeth, named Jupiter, is the father that helpeth. Ovis, which was the sky, the thunder, the god of the ancient Roman religion, mythology. Jupiter was a ditty and Roman state religion throughout the Republican and imperial eras of Christianity, dominant religion, empire. Bernabas was called Jupiter. Um, and then it goes into what I have. Bernabas was a Hellenist, and I read that to you, and backed it up. It's in there. You know, you just have to, that word is in there and kind of be like, hey, you know, don't you ever wonder why were they calling Jupiter? Jupiter, you know, and we're thinking, oh, well, you know, solar, you know. No, there's more to it, you know, and that's the whole thing is to let you know if your mind is just settling what, what they're preaching up in the Bible, then we're sold out. You know, we're still, they're still not studying it. Either one, they know, and they don't want to preach the truth or two, they're not really studying and they're not preaching deliverance to the world. The world is still sinning. Then you still spiritual blinded. You still dead. You know, you still asleep. You haven't woken up. But if you wake up, she'll breathe life into you and she'll bring you from dry, dry bones to let this born um, live. And it tells you it's all in there, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, um, and I'm going to go to Acts 15 now. But it says, see the difference when they're talking about the God and the true living God. There's a difference between the God and the living God. It's also the God of the dead, and then we got the God of the living. And it tells you that. So now we're going to go into Acts 15. Okay. A certain man named from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, then you cannot be saved. Means that you cleanse yourself from everything. But when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small decision, they dis the end disposition when they were determined that Paul and Barnabas were certain other than them that they should go into Jerusalem. The apostles of the elders were about the question. They brought forth the way of the church and they passed through fence and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles that they caused a great joy of all the brethren. But when they were to come in Jerusalem, they would receive the church and the apostles of the elders and declare the things of God that had done with them. But when they rose up, a certain sect of the Pharisees believed, saying that it was needful, circumcised them, and commanded them of the law of Moses. And apostles and the elders together, they considered of this matter. But when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up, and the men and the brethren that you know of God, that God made a choice among them in the Gentiles by mouth, which should hear the word of the gospel and believe that God knoweth the hearts and bear them witnesses and give them the Holy Ghost that he did unto us. You'll be able to tell the discernment when they're talking about their God and then they're talking about the living God. And you therefore tempt ye God and put the yoke upon the neck and the disciples, neither of our fathers, neither were we able to bear, but that we believe through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall be saved even as they do. When their mouth to kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what the miracles and wonders God had brought wrong among the Gentiles by them. And again, they held peace of James, answering men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon had declared how God first did visit the Gentiles and take them up from the people in his name. But they agreed the words of the prophet that it was written, I will return to build again the tabernacle of David, because we were all dead to sin. So she's going to come and build it again. And that is in Acts 15. By somebody breaking that generational curse. By one person standing in that whole tribe. It 
it is going to heal the whole generation of our father, David, you know, and then it tells you Acts 15, 16, because then you ever thought about when they go, oh, he's sleeping, that he was asleep to sin, you know, but he said, prophesize to the bones and tell his bones to live. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men, they may seek after the Lord and the Gentiles upon in the name that is called, that said, the Lord who doeth all things. And this is Acts 15, 16, 17, and 18. So Acts 15. 16, 17, and 18. I know it. It's in there. Known to God that they were works from the beginning of the world. In 18. <laughs> Wherefore my sentence that we trouble not them that were among the Gentiles are turned to God. So you see the creation, the real creator of heaven and earth is speaking. And then you get the creature that is speaking. But we write on to them the abstain of pollutions, of idols, from fornaction, and from strangle, and from blood covet. Get it? That's where you were at. But when that gets healed, that gets what they want. Then you live. <laughs> For Moses, the old time, had in every city that you preach him, and reading the synagogues on every Sabbath day. It pleased the apostles and the elders in the whole church to send chosen men into their own company to Antioch, now the creature, with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barabbas, and Silas, the sheep man, that were their brethren. So those are the saints of the ungodly of the underworld that are also going out there preaching a little bit of Jews and a little bit of Greeks. It tells you on there. Acts fifteen twenty four, for as much as we have heard a certain which you were out, you have troubled you with the words subverting the souls, saying that you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom they have no such commandments. He said, it does never says that. So why should we do that? It never says that. It says it again in Acts fifteen twenty four. for as much as we have heard in certain which went out from us, have trouble you with the word subverting your souls, saying that you must be circumcised, meaning cleansed, that you keep the law of the Ten Commandments, in whom we have no such commandment. They don't have none, they say. And seem good unto us, but being assembled to one accord, sent chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. And I just read to you who they are, sorcerers, and it's in there, and it tells you that. Do you see the difference now? Do you get it? How there's more to it. If you're not really studying, if you don't ask her, Mother God Yahweh gave me the eyes to see, the ears to hear. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to receive you. And it tells you how. Leave that blood covet and that sinful world and come back into a water baptismal covet with her. Men that have hazarded lives in the name of a Lord Jesus Christ again. Acts 15, 26, men that have hazarded their lives. They have hazarded them their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because they just ruined their lives by doing that. And that is in there. Acts 15, 26. Now 27, we sent there for Judas and Silas, and they should also tell you the same things by mouth. For it's been good for the Holy Ghost for us to lay upon a greater burden than necessary, that you abstain from meat offered to idols, from blood, and from strangle, and from fornaction, that you should keep yourself and should do well, fare ye well, so that you will be dismissed in Antioch, and they gather the multitude together and deliver the epistles. Because that was the epistles of lies that was from Paul, which is Bernabas, Jupiter, and Mercury. But I'm going to stop right there in Acts 15, 32. And then I'll pick it up again and do third video only because it cut me off. Um, so let me do video three. And then um, I have to go to a different location to post the videos. Hopefully that's able to help you up a little and give you some revelation in the difference between the creature and the creator. 
speaking in there and the false prophets and then you get the ones that were actually so 